decorate my office, but first I would like to take a little while and do a little cooking with you. So let's go to my uh, little garden. <laughs> it's looking kind of pitiful out here. If I had a lot of gardening pride, I probably would be too ashamed to show you like it's a very modest setup that I've got going on here. I've got like four tomato plants. These ones don't look quite ripe yet, but I've got one good one right here. So we will pick that today. It's mostly ripe. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty good to me. It's so nice out here. It's really that shift between summer and autumn, and I like being outside in this kind of weather, because it's not too hot. I don't love the heat. My basil is absolutely pitiful. She's done. We're gonna just take the last of the leaves off here to use today. May as well use them well, we still can, but uh, a lot of this plant is just toast. <laughs> she had a good run, that's okay. And I mostly just like growing food that I can eat, but some things I've been successful with and some things I haven't. My peppers, as you can see, are doing very well, which is kind of ironic because I don't particularly like peppers. I really like uh, tomatoes and zucchinis, so I was hoping those would be really successful for me. Everybody told me zucchinis, like, you'll grow so many you can't get rid of them fast enough. I think I grew like five. I don't know. I might not have the gardening time was my very first year growing any type of vegetable, so I'm doing my best, you know, I grew something, that's, that's good enough for me. We'll get our one tomato washed up, and these basil leaves too, it actually rained pretty recently, None of these things are particularly dirty, but, you know, it's always good to give a little wash. Got some of my stuff set up here. I can't wait to show you what I'm making today. I love to post photos um, on different socials of food that I've made, but I think it's been many years since I've actually cooked on this channel, and now I'm kind of in a place where I feel like I can do that, so let's, let's do a little cooking together. I love to cook. I don't know if I would say I'm, like, pro at it. I just really like to do it, and the main reason is because I love to eat. So, if you love to eat, you gotta figure out how to cook. <laughs> I'm also a really big For my Canadian friends, you have no idea. 
So luckily, I picked a couple more tomatoes the other day and I've just been keeping them in the fridge. This one has a little split, but I can just cut that off. It's no big deal. I'm cutting the tomatoes into... Well, I like, I like to cut things into tiny pieces because I like when everything has a similar texture, but of course, if you were going to make this, you don't have to cut them as tiny as I like to cut them, but I like to make tiny little cuts. My grandmother, um, when she was still alive, she would always, like, impress everybody by making these complicated salads that would have everything cut into, like, minuscule pieces. Every aspect of the salad would be minced beyond belief. And I just have such fond memories of this. So whenever I'm, like, mincing or chopping or what have you, like, if I'm having that, eh, who cares about this? No one's gonna notice. I'm just cooking for myself. I think of her and I think, oh, but she would cut it into finely beautiful tiny little pieces, so I'm gonna be like her and do the same. And this is about four small tomatoes. I don't really, <laughs> I don't really follow recipes. This is just, um, me finding things in my pantry and being like, yeah, that looks good. Let's, let's do that. <laughs> Put a little bit of olive oil and stir up these gorgeous little tomato pieces just so everything's coated. A little bit of garlic salt, yes. More garlic. Some black pepper. On that, a little dried oregano. And as well, a little dried some nice things to make these tomatoes even more delicious to bring out their natural flavors. So I've got my oven at about 450 and I'm going to roast these little like wrapped up garlic cloves for about 20 minutes longer than the tomatoes. Timing-wise, I mostly just always keep a close eye on uh, my oven because I don't really trust it. <laughs> I always feel like I have to be watching things or else, you know, it could get just a little bit too toasty. I got the nice bread today as well. Normally, I'll just buy some other little nuts and stuff in it, you know, like the seeds kind. But I wanted like that crispy, crispy bread today. So all of this basil, it seems like it's quite a lot of basil, but it's not really. I'm gonna do kind of like a rough cut on this. I kind of love when basil is like um, in a ribbon sort of shape. It looks really pretty on top of food, in my opinion. Look, I, I like when things look nice, even if it's just for me. And this is not um, an easy breakfast to make. This is like kind of breakfast to make when you feel like just luxuriating in the process of cooking. And I think every once in a while, it can be nice to do that. I love roasted garlic so much. My gosh, I could just eat these. They're so delicious. But it makes me feel good to kind of spend a little time making a beautiful little dish for myself. Not always. A lot of the time I can be like, eat cereal for a meal. But, um, it just feels nice to kind of just cook something that's gonna be like, delectable, 
you know, I'm just putting a little bit of butter on these pieces of bread, not too much, but I'm going to put them in the oven and I want them to get like a nice little crisp on them, just on one side, just so that there's like a crunchy texture because some of the other stuff that we're going to put on top going to be soft and warm, so a little bit of a crunchy bread will feel very satisfying. The great thing about this little dish, though, is if, if I had a bunch of tomatoes and a bunch of garlic, I could probably make a lot of this, like all these little ingredients, my little roasted tomatoes, and then I could just eat this every day, every breakfast, because you can just warm it up really easily, but I am working with what I've got, so we have a little bowl of roasted tomatoes, and I'm just gonna mash the roasted garlic a little bit so that it's really soft, these lovely basil ribbons. And then, of course, we need the most important ingredient in my eyes, which is goat cheese. I love goat cheese so much, so much. It's like very tangy. That's what I love about it. So, the toasts are ready. They're really hot. And the first thing I'm going to put on is a little bit cheese on each one. I like to put a lot, but you know, if you were going to make this, you could put what a reasonable person would put on the toast. And what's great is the bread is warm, so it just kind of becomes really spreadable really easily. Whenever I buy goat cheese, I always get the small little tube, and I always think, oh, I wish I would have bought the big one, but there's no way I could eat that in time before it goes bad, and I don't want to waste anything, so I always get the small one. Put some of that roasted garlic on here, and spread it around so it's a little even in most bites, you know, and then it's time for our roasted tomatoes. I just like to do little blobs, I guess you could say. <laughs> I guess I could spread this across the whole toast, but it looks kind of prettier <laughs> to just do a little smatterings of it. The splash of color really does make me so happy to look at. I think I really need to get a cute one I've had for ages. It's just from Ikea, and it's served me very well. I would never get rid of it, but I kind of, I'm, I'm like, oh, I need a, a cute cutting board as well. A show cutting board, if you will. That's gonna get added to my to-do list. So we've got the basil on there, everything, but the piece is still needed. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my balsamic glaze. You know, recently my friend said to me, you know, you can just make your own balsamic glaze. It's really easy. And I just looked at her and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I, I can't see myself doing that. It's just so convenient to buy it. I've got spiced chai mix here make a hot tea and then put ice in it if I want to, but again, it is just very convenient to have this tea concentrate. And it's so nice for like an iced drink. So just a little bit of oat milk I'm putting in here and then of course we need to get some ice going so that it actually is an iced drink. <laughs> now, that's the moment of truth. 
very first bite. <laughs> okay, that's really good. It's so garlicky. It feels like it's just sumptuous. It's so delicious. It's a really nice breakfast if you feel like going all out. Thumbs up for me. I love this so much. <laughs> it's kind of unusual for me to do cooking videos, but let me know if you like them. I'm happy to do more. was exactly what I wanted. I needed to be in like the full mood, but it's still kind of hot out, so I needed a cold drink, but it's very much it's very much satisfied the flavor that I was looking for. My favorite part of this is the roasted garlic. I could just eat roasted garlic on its own, even without all the rest of this, but this, I guess, makes it a meal. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. I think of September as a new year, even though I'm not in school anymore, and it gives me this sense in my heart that I have a fresh start and a chance at beginning new things. It also makes me really, really want to buy a new set of markers, so that's a strange association. Last year, I decided to start learning a new language, and I'm proud to say that I've kept up with that. So this September, I want to try something a little different. In my life, an area I am super green in is interior design. Look, I know what colors I like, and I know the vibe I like, but outside of I have no idea what I'm doing when trying to put together a space. I'm just trying things that I hope work with no plan. And it is kind of exciting to think, okay, I have no idea what I'm doing, so I can only get better at this. That's a fun feeling to me. I've started taking L.B. Boabing's course on reversible interior design, which is all about more personalized when you are a renter. Because us renters, we're limited on what kinds of changes we can make in our living space. But I've been learning in this course that there are actually so many customizable things you can do to make things feel gorgeous and fancy in a way that can be deconstructed easily when the time comes. It's making feel really empowered. One more thing. I really love that on Skillshare, I can just search by digital program. I already use Procreate for illustration on my iPad, and I already use Final Cut Pro for editing all the videos on this channel. I can type those programs into the search bar, and tons of great courses come up. Some general, and some specific, but all perfect for upping my game. So if there's something in your life that you want to boost, like your social media, marketing, the skills you use for freelancing, and more, you will be able to heighten your know-how with the courses on Skillshare. Do you want to try something new and unlock your creativity? Well, why not try one month for free? It's hard to find a and free, right? So my darlings, the first 1,000 of you who use the link in my description 
will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you again to Skillshare. So, at this point, my office is kind of humdrum, to be honest. I was joking in a previous video that, like, I need you guys to yell at me to paint my office because I couldn't get in the right headspace to do it. But you guys are too nice and no one has yelled at me. To conjure up the will. I bought these headphones and a keyboard over a year ago, and it was right before we were gonna move. I wasn't in the greatest headspace at the time, so when they came in, I just packed them away, and I thought, okay, I'll eventually unpack these and I'll have new headphones when I unpack everything. <laughs> but it really did take me a while to get out of that kind of funk that I found myself in. And I think the painting is related. Like, I was not in, I guess, like a nesting place. But it's really been, like, kicking my butt a little bit. My office doesn't really feel like a place that I want to spend time in. So that's something that I want to change today. And hopefully I can use these new headphones and new keyboard now that I actually am going to be enjoying my time in here. So I guess it's just one thing at a time. Sometimes you just have to pull a box out and finally go through everything, even if it's a little difficult. It's worth it to do that, I think, and I really want to enjoy my space again, because in my old office, everything was bright pink, very bright pink. I don't really know if I'm a, like, did it in the store and explained it to me, I like gasped. And then it twists on the lid and that becomes a spout to pour the paint out so you don't get paint. Oh, it's, it's, um, still, it still is like the coolest thing to me. I can't believe we've been without this technology all this time. But now we have it. We're living in the future. Is now. These are my little paintbrushes for cutting in. You can see they have seen some action. Lots of paint. This one is less nice. Okay, but they do have good 
sounds, both of them. The wooden one here was like a little bit fancier. I got it at like a fancier paint store. But, you know, this cheaper one is fine too. Both of these paintbrushes have their needs and uses. And this drop cloth was one of my sheets when I was like a little kid, like a three-year-old. Yeah, it's Sesame Street. Try, try not to be impressed with me right now. <laughs> yeah, I still have that. It's for paint now. That's, that's what life is all about. One day you're sleeping in Sesame Street sheets. Years later, you're painting on them. The world continues to turn. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut everything in with a brush today. So cutting in, if you've never painted a room before, it's what we call doing the edges. Because you can't very well use a roller for this, right? A couple of weeks ago, I was actually like griping to a friend. I was like, oh look, I really want to paint, but I don't want to tape the whole room off. Like that's so much work. And she was like, well, why would you tape it? And I was like, well, you have to, you know, tape so that you get straight lines. Everybody tapes the room. Everybody tapes woodwork. And she was like, yeah, but why are you taping when I know that you can paint a straight line? And another light bulb moment for me. Why would I? So I'm not. I'm not going to tape. I'm just going to freehand this. Uh, sometimes you have to get really close and concentrate really, really hard uh, to make sure that you get the perfect straight line, but it's totally worth it because it's just annoying to me to tape. I mean, I think it's a good idea and I like using tape in my painting, like, <laughs> what's the word for, like, you know, on paper paintings, but on a wall, I just, uh, this time around, I'm just gonna freehand it. It's kind of a relaxing thing to do, anyway, because you're just focusing with one single purpose, and the results are so immediate, you just get to see the gorgeous, fresh color you chose on the wall. This is kind of a funny pink because in some lights and with some shadows it kind of looks like um like a blush color and in some other lights it can actually look very cool toned but in reality it's a very warm uh, soft pink <laughs> I've been jokingly calling it dusted tomato because I am an ancient corner gas fan. So it's a dusted tomato wall. I have this really handy dandy ladder. It's basically made for painting. So it has little holes for you to put your brushes in and it even has like a little spot for your entire can of paint. This is a second hand item. Oh yeah. So satisfying when you can get the good stuff secondhand. That makes me so happy. You guys know that because I'm obsessed with thrifting and antiquing and yard sales. There's a little part in my office that's like a ledge. So to get really up on the ladder to get it, um, because I am short. I'm five two. There's not a lot that I can do in this room without the ladder. It's coming very handy for me. Much appreciated. Although, you know what? I'm great at getting around the baseboards. You would not believe how good I am at that because I'm close to the ground. But in all seriousness, even with just this small amount of paint, already feel happier in this space. When I am in a pink room, I just feel more like myself. It's a diff 
difficult thing to explain, but pink is such a happy color. And I think if you find that color that makes you happy, like, that is something worth chasing. You know, I, I much prefer the brush to the roller. The roller takes a lot of muscle to do. It is very satisfying that it does such large spaces so fast, but you really have to, like, put your back into it. You know, ironically, in Splatoon, the main item I use is a roller, but in real life, I much prefer a brush. It does take a lot of time to paint a room, when you're doing it by yourself, it takes a lot longer. I'm someone who's kind of a perfectionist, so I keep finding little tiny spots that the roller somehow missed. But you know, that's what, that's what <laughs> tiny little plastic containers of paint are for. You can just kind of scoot along, fill things in. The most satisfying part is putting the electronic caps, the outline caps, back on. It's so easy. Like, these just screw on so easily, but like, once these are on, you really feel like it's fancy. It looks professional. That's how I feel when I do it. It's like that moment in a painting where you take Time to hang stuff up. This is the most fun part. This little shelf, this wooden one, I got on Facebook Marketplace. Ten dollars. Oh yeah. And then this little needle point is from the Hamilton Antique Mall. I think I scored this for like mm, six or seven. I love a good deal. It's the best feeling in the world. Um, one other thing that you should know about me is that I'm the kind of friend where when I come over to your house, I will straighten your photos on your wall if I notice they're crooked. I will not hesitate to do this. Probably some people would think it's rude. I can't help myself. I feel compelled to straighten picture frames. Little collection of stuff that I'm putting up on the shelf. I mean, this is kind of a high shelf. I have to get on a ladder to fully view the shelf. So, kind of doing like a decorative thing. Um, function? No, form rather than function. <laughs> it's a good motto. These are all laundry boxes. It's like a fancy times thing, like usually for my birthday, we'll go to lingerie. So, you know, sometimes I get a little box of macarons to take home, or a little box of tea, and I feel very, very loved in that moment, and the boxes are just so cute. I don't know why, but I'm obsessed with them. They're great for storage, and so I keep little stuff in them. I just think it would be cute to sort of put, I don't know, little boxes out as if it's a tea room. And of course I have to put my little guys up here. Of course. That is what being an adult is all about. You can just do this, and no one can tell you that you can't because you're an adult. What a gorgeous time. <laughs> here is my little wooden shelf. Who remembers this pretty kitty? Does anybody? I, I am still obsessed with her. And Jessica's is going up here. Also, I got this little latte cat, Slovenian critter in Japan, who I love. And this little bag and this tiny, tiny, tiny little box is from my Slovenian family's lingerie collaboration set. Also, tiny
tiny little baby flora bunny over here. little chocolate dip treat because this is such a small tiny shelf it feels really satisfying to put tiny tiny objects on it sort of curated in a little way we'll put this tiny fork there i have a lot of tiny little trinkets like this i feel like i mean they have to in another video, but I want to get some kind of like clear, maybe like a tackle box so that I can organize all my little critters and things when they aren't on display. It'd be cute to put them somewhere. I don't know. We'll, we'll ruminate on that. So this is the little wall display. It's pretty simple right now. I will gather treasures. The most satisfying part. I was waiting for this. Now I get to enjoy the pink walls with the fluffy carpet and all of it together. It actually kind of pulls it all together, I think. I don't know. I think so. Okay. Can I complain about something really? trying to take a tag off of something, it breaks into a million pieces. Like, I worked at one of these stores for many years, so I know it's like a loss prevention thing so that you don't switch the tags from different items. Like, I get it. I understand it. But it is so annoying, especially when they don't come off in one perfect, clean piece. satisfying when you can get the tag off in one fell swoop. I love that. So these are like some pamphlet advertisements that I picked up at the Sanrio store in Japan. I love advertising, especially like beautiful advertising spreads. So I'm thinking it would be cool to use one of these as wall art. I really like this one the best, this mermaid one. But to be honest, the colors don't really go in my space. I like it the best, but I might have to 86 that one. These ones, on the other hand, in my opinion, they're a little less cute, but they go better. I have to show you this amazing hook. I found this like a month ago on Etsy. I was looking specifically for a mid-century style wall hook and oh my gosh they have so much. This one is by a Montreal artisan so I was happy to find somebody in Canada who hand makes these and it was a good price so I kind of wish that I had bought two but I only bought one, so what are you going to do? It's perfect for the little nook next to my desk because I want to have my headphones really easily accessible. You know, when I was unpacking the headphones and this keyboard, I actually forgot that I ordered keycaps as well. When I ordered little things for myself. I just like was not in a great mental health place. So finding them now when I'm doing a lot better, it kind of feels like a little treat from past me, which is nice. I like love past me for doing that for me now, but I'm happy that I'm actually going to use it now and enjoy this keep so the switches that I picked out for this are, I think, brown switches. I tend to really like a softer click on a keyboard. Keyboard sounds or something I pay a lot of attention to these days, as you could probably imagine. It's just more satisfying 
to me when the click isn't too, too sharp. It's just soft. And this keyboard comes with a really cute wrist pad. I'm excited to use this because I've actually never used a wrist rest for my keyboard. Like, a while ago I got a vertical mouse and I love that. I highly recommend a vertical mouse if you do a lot of um, computer work. Definitely a game changer for like my wrist, you know, because I'm typing and clicking but I'm also painting and then all of us are holding our phones all the time. So vertical mouse was definitely the way to go for me. I'm interested to see if the little wrist cloud uh, is a nice touch, you know. So the keycaps came with this little tool, which is a brush, but also you just slip these little ends on the keycap and it's really easy to take them out. Sometimes they are like, you have to pull a little bit, you're kind of like, am I doing this right? But you are. Pretty hard to damage these. This is a very clean keyboard, but it does, it's satisfying to use the little brush to just whisk away, you know, bad vibes, I guess. <laughs> I want this keyboard to produce only positive thoughts. And I gotta fill all these little keys in. I need tell you about these curtains. I had the most satisfying experience because I found an old blog post from years and years ago that showed these curtains and they were sold out since 2018. They're originally from West Elm but you know I'm like a very stubborn person so I was like great I'm gonna wait to buy curtains until I can find my dream curtains. I set a bunch of eBay searches and like all the secondhand site ones and I finally found the curtains of my dreams more than 80% off of what they were retail and you can't even get these anymore like they don't make them anymore I love the design they're like scratchy cross hatching oh so good and I love yellow curtains because when the sun comes through, it sort of makes the whole room glow in like a goldenrod kind of color, you know. It's very cheerful. If you need like a simple thing to make your space feel different, go with yellow curtains. I promise you. <laughs> so the advertisement that I ended up choosing is this one that has the plush toys that are sort of in like a retro color scheme. I think that this color scheme matches my office the best, but what's so great about this is I can change it out all the time. Alright, we've got our gorgeous keyboard. Look at those bright keys. Oh, they make me so happy to look at them because they're just so bright. And the cloud wrist, oh come on, the cloud wrist rest, it is hard to say wrist rest, the cloud wrist rest is divine. This is my favorite thing right now. I've got my little David's tea canister, this was from like years ago, but I like the design, so guess what? Now it's gonna hold pencils, now it's gonna hold pencils. I love to reuse old stuff like that. Miracle Eye acrylic coasters. These are my favorite. Miracle Eye just makes the coolest stuff, the coolest clothes. We've got my Owl's Moving Castle mug. This is gonna be like my all the time mug because when I see you turn a bed, I feel joy in my heart. <laughs> I'm like, that's me. I'm that this is really cool too. This is actually a tape dispenser. 
you never know when you're going to need a little bit of cute washi tape. And having it right here will actually remind me to use it instead of having it sit in my washi tape box in my craft supplies. Never to see the light of day. Never to get used. But no, no. I will use this washi tape, I promise you. I'm just cutting a cup of, like, favorite pens, favorite pencils in this little display. I usually keep a little lip color handy, too. This is my time timer. It helps me with the time management in a big way, because I can just use it to set, you know, work on a task for five minutes, ten change my mind, Jesk does not go on the shelf on the wall. Jesk needs to be here with me on my desk, keeping a close eye on me, making sure that everything is on the up and up, that everything, the, the I's are dotted, the T's are checked, that everything's good. I've got my day planner here, and my new space is much all set up. I think eventually I want to do some kind of like more wall art. I don't really have it done right now, but to me art isn't something that you just like go buy a bunch of. You just like find things in your travels as life goes, you know, an antique store here, you know, uh, an event you go to here. And that's, that's the process that I need to go through to cultivate some, some good wall art. So I still have that journey ahead of me. But I feel a renewed sense of hope. And this bright color is making me really excited for the upcoming season. I feel, I feel just really positive in this space. And I hope that you've enjoyed this little vlog today. I had so much fun sharing it with you. And I'll see you in the next one, my darlings. Bye for now.